Alright guys, I'm going to talk a little bit more about lists. Lists are just about, lists and arrays are just about, if you get the idea of lists and arrays, then you are a programmer, which is why I have been discussing them all along, rather than waiting until chapter 5 to do them. Now I'm going to give maybe one or two more examples of lists, but then I'm going to go on and talk about something else, right? We need to talk about classes as well. We need to move on to chapter 6. So, I want to look at list just a couple maybe one or two more examples then I want to then I want to well let's take a look at what's coming up on chapter six but we might take a peek at the chapter five unit exam and I better list unit ex exams in a module as well as in the assignments list because people okay design with functions Chapter 6. We can almost skip this chapter. We've been using functions from the very get-go. But we'll take a brief look at it. How about that? Also, I need to upload the optional lectures over JavaScript and over using, um, over using Python to create graphical user interfaces so that you can pick which one of those you want to watch as well. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, let's download Chapter 6 with the background while we're doing Had to switch back to my old Mac. All right. So here we have idle going up and running. What could we do with lists that are fun? What if we were to implement a hangman game, right? Say that we had a word stored like this. Actually, this is more string manipulation than anything else. But say we had a word, right? A secret word. And by the way, if you're still working on Hangman and you do need help, I still have that flowchart available. I need to make sure that nobody has requested it. I haven't seen the requests, but maybe someone has. Right. And so here's our word, secret word. And let's make, let's pretend that the user has implemented some guesses. Maybe we'll just make a while, right? While true, right? And we're going to make a guesses list, and each time they make a new guess, we append that to the list, right? So, you know, the character that they're guessing is equal to the input of guess a letter, right? First thing we need to do is print out this word base and put in underscores if they haven't gotten those letters yet, right? So, for character in secret word, if that character is in the guesses list, then we need to print it out, right? Print, or we can make a whole string and wait and print it out at the end. That might make a little bit more sense. Uh, so let's put display word is equal to an empty string and then for every character that's in the guesses if it's good then we want to add that to the display word right is the letter in the word in the guesses right but if it's not in the guesses then it's not going to work, and so we need to just like append a dash or an underscore, right? And when all that's done, we just need to print it out, right? Print current state. You could come up with a better definite get definite definition, right? Than that. All right, and then they guess a letter. And then we add that to the list, right? Guesses dot append that letter, right? All right, let's give that a run. I think 
for an electric fan. Yeah, make sure of that real fast. Yep, make sure. Yeah, all right. All right, so we're going to run it. The first thing we should see is just six dashes, right? Six underscores. Because we build our display based on every letter in the secret word, and if that letter is in the guesses, then we print it out, right? Because it's a good guess. Else, you know, we don't. So, running the module. There we go, right? None of it's correct. We're going to guess an S because there should be an S in there. How about an E? There are two E's in it, right? How about a C? Let's guess something wrong. All right. So, right, we've been appending our guesses to the guesses list. But we also need to be counting mistakes, right? So let's make a mistake list as well, right? It's an empty list, right? And so if the guess, right? If the character that they guessed is in secret, it's a good guess, right? We can just print a message, right? Because we're going to display it in a minute. Else, we need to add it to the bad guesses, right? Mistakes dot append. That guess, right? And how many guesses are we going to let them make? I mean, how many mistakes are we going to let them make, right? Let's be rude and say that they can only make three bad guesses, right? If, you know, the length of the mistakes array is greater than three, then we print out too many bad guesses, right? How do we know if it works, right? How do we know if it works? Well, if there are any underscores in it, in our display word, we know that it's not done. Otherwise, we need to keep going, right? So we could just do a check, right? If underscore in display word, we know it's not finished yet. Now, this is, this is not a complete implementation, right? It doesn't exit if they get it right and stuff like that, but it's actually pretty close, right? It's actually pretty close. Let's enter some bad guesses, right? Guess a letter. All righty, we're going to guess an X. Oops, secret not defined. I thought we, oh, I called it secret word. My guess. I mean, my mistake. So if there's an underscore in the display word, we print not done yet, else we print all done, right? And again, um, this doesn't make a, for a good looking game. But anyways, let, let's, let's run it because we've got some really important concepts going on here. That's why I wanted to go ahead and do it, right? Guess a letter, S, right? That's a good guess, but we're not done yet. R, that's a good guess, not done yet. T, not done yet. Alrighty, but let's make some bad guesses. P, you know, we should tell them how many get bad guesses they've made. And it doesn't look like our check to say that the letter, we're not telling them that it's a bad letter, right? We should probably do that. Okay, right, and I'm going to guess M because that's also bad. And there's no X in it. There's no Y in it. It says too many bad guesses, right? So we should have exited there, right? Just like we should have exited if they got it, 
right? A couple of break statements there would probably fix that up. So that is effectively a hangman implementation. And by the way, right, if you haven't started on a project, you could use this or flowchart that I'll provide you to get hangman going in a week, right? That's, that's kind of my gift to you <laughs> right here. All right. So, you know, I'd rather you finish your whatever project you're already working on. But if you haven't started, here's an idea. Okay, so that's one example of using lists, right? To keep track of our guesses and our mistakes. We could even make a list of good values, right? Good equals, right? And then each time, right, if it was a good guess, we append it to the good guesses. But we don't really need that, right, because we've got it working without that. But it might be fun to print their good guesses. I don't, I don't see any reason to do that, but we could. We're not printing their bad guesses. Be nice to do that, right? Yeah, anyways, I'm not going to write the whole program for you. I don't know if I really want to create a list of good guesses or not. If you thought that was a good idea, you could do that. And I'm sure that the flowchart I send you shows you a, a somewhat similar but different way because there's always more than one way to implement things, right? All right, hope that makes sense. All right. What is this display word string? Word including underscores with underscores for unguessed letters, right? What does this for loop do? It goes through the secret word string for every character in our secret word. I guess we should just say letter, right? For every letter in our secret word is a letter in the guesses. Now it would be cool if the secret word was, you know, chosen randomly, whatever, right? There's lots you could do with this. But this is a start. This is some core logic. All right. So why don't we just flag this as playing with some ideas for using lists for a hangman game, right? Okay. What if you had a list, and I know I've already done this before, but I want to do it again. What if you had a list, you know, um, my right, my in quote, mom, in quote, comma, likes, in quote, comma, peas, right? And you want to just print that, but you want it to look nice, right? Just printing L won't make it look good. It's going to do this hangman thing every single time I run it now. Why don't I put this all in a function, right, or a block of code, right? Game equals input. Do you want to play a game, right? Don't need that, right? But let, let's do this so that we don't have to answer this every single time. And then if the game is equal to Y, then they do want to play it and let's indent all this stuff. This is the end while, right? Just to make a note of that. All right. So we're not going to play our game. I want to see that my mom likes peas. I swear. Unindent does not match. Well, I guess it doesn't. Did before. Don't know what I did wrong. All right. All right, no, we don't want to play again. My mom likes peace. Now that looks lame, so we're going to use dot join to print it out instead, right? 
Let's make a new string, right, is equal to, what am I going to join it with? Nothing, right? Is that going to be our delimiter? I think that's going to look lame because it'll say my mom likes peas with no spaces, right? No. My mom likes peas, right? No spaces. My mom likes peas, right? Well, let's make something a little bit better than that. Do we want to separate every word with a comma? So do that with a join. Do we want to just separate everything with a space, right? That probably looks best, right? And maybe, you know, maybe you want to add an exclamation point at the end of that, right? So let's tack on an, uh, an exclamation point at the end, right? Because that's going to be the best looking one. <laughs> Unsupported operand type for that. Oh, that's right. No, that's not right. I'm not seeing why I wanted why I'm getting that error. Oh, because I forgot to put the parentheses L there. That was dumb. I need to show you something about functions. Even if I don't hit chapter six, which I'm pretty much I'm sure we already know everything in there. That's not quite true. But everything that I want you to know, we've already covered. All right. Oh, drats. Another good feature would be, what if they wanted to guess the whole word, right? Like on Jeopardy, you know, once you know the whole word. Yeah, but we haven't done that. All right, so run it again. No, I don't want to run it again. Right. And so we have my mom likes peas with commas, and then lastly we like my mom likes peas with an exclamation point. All right. Just to put in our notes what this looks like each time. All right. Yeah. All right. So dot join is important. And remember dot split. Dot split is equally important, right? If you have a string that looks like this, my comma dad comma likes comma you know pizza. Apparently mom's veggie vegetarian, vegan, and dad isn't, and then you want to make a list from that, you just do this, just do F. Say what? Let's do that. Right? And then you do s dot split. It'll split it. Right? Or you could say split based on spaces, right? And then if you print the list out, it'll say it'll have converted it to a list. Right? What if it says s is equal to but what if we did have those comments in there? I love comma mountain comma do. Right. Let's try splitting that. See what we get. Well, how are we going to split it? Everything is separated by a comma and a split and a space. So let's just try that. I'm not sure that's going to work. Hopefully, it will. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's good. That's good. Right. So splitting it by spaces worked. If you're going to split by spaces, you may as well not put anything, right? Because that's a default. And if you don't put anything, it handles tabs as well. Right? Okay. Also, an advantage to doing a split with nothing specified is it would handle double spaces as though they were single spaces. Whereas if you put double spaces, I mean, if we did it like that, 
then it's not going to look right because it's going to have treat each one of these as a separate thing. And so we're going to see an empty list entry. Right, so we see an empty list entry because of that double space there, and we told it to break on single spaces. And if you try to tell it to break on double spaces, then it's going to treat that as a single unit, and that as a single unit. So your best bet is to just not specify anything, and it'll work with single spaces, double spaces, tabs, or whatever. But if you need to do something else, like commas or commas and spaces or whatever, you can do that. Okay, so these are examples of dot join. to make a string from a list. These are examples of dot split to convert a string to a list separated by delimiters, right? Or based on the delimiters. All right, and what if you have to change the list? What if you want to change every element in the list, right? What if we want to make all of these uppercase, right? Then we could do s is equal to, and use list comprehension, value dot upper for every value in the list, right? except I specified string there. That's not what we want. We want the list, right? make every element of the list uppercase with list comprehension. And I've given list comprehension examples all through the semester so you know what they are. It's just writing a little for loop between square braces to turn it into a list, right? And so now when we print it out, it's going to be all uppercase. Oh, let's prove it. Right there, uppercase now. You can do the same thing to convert two numbers, right? What if you had this good old Jenny's phone number, right? Jenny is equal to 8, comma, 6, comma, 7, comma, 5, comma, 3, comma, 0, comma, 9. Right, we just read that data from a file or something, right? Let's split it. List is equal to j dot split based on commas. Not comma space because there's no spaces in this, right? But then we want to, it's right now, if we print it out, it's a list of strings, which we couldn't do math on, right? We couldn't call the sum function or something on it. Right, A675309. It's all strings. It's got quotes around it. We can't do the math. So let's use list comprehension to convert them to floats list is equal to float parentheses value for every value in the list and we can calculate the sum real easily right total is equal to the sum of the list what's the average the average is equal to the sum of the list divided by the length of the list right the number of items in the list All right I'll come back here so let's print the list out and let's print the total and let's print the average All right there we go all right and so it was a originally it was a list of strings and then it became 8675309, and we were able to calculate the total and the average real easily, right? So if you had that kind of data, it doesn't take too long to get numeric data out of it, right? If you remove that print statement, you know, it only takes a couple lines of code. Got to split it, list comprehension, 
and boom, it's a list of numbers that you can do with whatever you want it to do. So at this point, it's a list of strings. Convert to a list of floats. All right, let's go take a look at that quiz. Let's go take a look at that quiz. Using a different Mac, screen size is set differently. I hope it's still readable to you. Let's zoom in if I can. Anyways, here goes. A minute later. All right. All right. The variable data refers to the list 10, 20, 30. The expression data plus. 40, 50 evaluates to what? Well, we're adding one list to another, right? So it becomes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I think that's true. All right, the variable info refers to the dictionary name, Sandy, age 17. The expression info.get hobbies.none evaluates it. Well, no, I honestly don't know. Well, that's a dang good question. Can we play this in the shell to find out? Now, I guess the problem that I'm having is that when I use dictionaries, what I typically do is use info subscript, right? To get hobbies. Oh, dot get returns a none if it's not found in the dictionary, right? So if you did get Sandy, comma none, excuse me, if you did get name, comma, why, why don't we even, well, why don't we just go and give some examples here, right? We're going to make a good old dictionary, right? And we're going to say that dictionary dot or dictionary subscript you know red is equal to you know roha I believe that's correct and dictionary white is equal to you know blanco it could be I'm totally bot botching these and then that's it right so we can print the dictionary out but let's get an element from it, right? S is equal to D dot get, and I want to find out what red is, but if it's not found, then we're going to say I have no idea, right? And then print S. Now it's not going to print I have no idea because it is in the dictionary. Oh, dang it, I started the game. Didn't mean to do that. Do it again. Alrighty. Alrighty, right? And so dot get followed by this. This second one is a default value, right? If it's not found in the dictionary. Because what happens if you tried to get it and there was no value, right? What if I tried to print D subscript red, right? That's gonna crash. Using a subscript is great, but what if you specify a subscript that doesn't exist? Now, what the method I've been showing you is, okay, let's change this to something that doesn't exist, right? Like something with a capital R, it's misspelled, right? Or embed, whatever. When we run it, that's going to crash. That's certainly not one. All right, anyways. See, it did not find it. Key error bed. It did not find it. So what I normally do is check to see if that target is in there, right? If bed is in the dictionary, then we're good to go, right? 
but you can also ask it to give it to you with .git, and if it's not in there, it'll say, I have no idea, right? Let's try bed, right, because bed is definitely not in there. Or purple, right? Right, and so purple was, I have no idea. It did a git, but it didn't find it, and so it printed that, which is safer than doing s is equal to d subscript purple, right? Would crash since purple isn't in the dictionary. And they just put none in there instead, right? So, what I got here, since hobbies is not in the dictionary, it's going to return none, right? I believe that to be the case. Can we skip? Oh, running out of battery. I have to break this up into two lectures, probably. Where'd it go? Did I hit the backspace? Yeah, probably. All right, lots of questions over dictionaries. The variable info refers to the dictionary, name Sandy, age 17, and then please give me a list of the keys. Well, what are the keys? Name and age are the keys. So, we want a list of keys. Which one looks like a list? Square braces. Alrighty, so what does the dot index call? It tells you the position, the index number. Right? So what index number is 20 in this list? Right? Well, if it was dot index 10, it would be 0. Right? And if it was dot index 30, it would be 2 because 0, 1, and 2. But it's not either one of those, so it's got to be one of the others. All right, here's a list, again, the expression data subscript 1. Well, what's the element 1? Well, that's element 0, so you know it's not 10. And, of course, if you take this, I think the questions will be in a different order. But All right, so 10, 20, 30, you change element 1 to 5. Well, that's element 0, and that's 1, so what will it look like when that 20 has been changed to a 5? All right, now we're inserting. Whoopsie, I'm not sure we talked about insert much. Insert puts new data into the list, and if you insert it at position 0, it goes into the beginning of the list, right? But if you insert into position 1, it becomes the second item in the list, right? The 15 becomes a new index 1. And if you insert it into 2, and so on. Let's give an example of that, right? Our list is equal to, you know, let's put um, just some numbers on it, right? 1, 2, 3, comma. oh, heck. Let's make them hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400. But let's insert into the list. 999, but we're going to put it at position 0. And then if you print the list out, you're going to see that the list is now, 999 is now at the beginning of the list, right? At index 0. And let's insert something else, right? L dot insert eight 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 comma two eight 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 is now the third element of the list at index. Guess I should have put my print statement, right? At 
at index 2 because we specified 2 there, right? If you want to pin something to it, right, you're going to pin it, right? All right, what did the first one do? It inserted 99 at position 0. All right, seems to be doing something backwards from what I expected. The position goes in the first one, and the value goes into the second one. Excuse me, my mistake, right? And that makes sense because the first value has to be numeric, but the second value can be anything, right? It can be a string, you know. If you wanted to, you can insert quotes around it. You know, you could quote, insert the word red there. Now, you don't want to do that. You don't want to insert, you know, strings and numbers into a list, but you could, right? And that's what we will see. All right, so 999 moved to the beginning of the list because we inserted it to be position zero. The color red became the third because we told it to be index two and a pin tacked it on to the end. So if you're gonna insert into position one, 15, then you look in here for one that looks like 10, 20, 30, but with 15 at position one, right? We know how to do slicing. 1 colon 3 means starting at position 1 and taking two values. How do I know that it's two values? Because 3 minus 1 is 2. Right? So position 1 is there and give me two values. Yeah, we know slicing. Which of the following are immutable data structures? Strings and tuples. Didn't talk much about tuples. I really need to run to the power cord. A tuple just looks like this. It looks like a list, but it's in, in parentheses rather than braces, right? And what's the thing about a tuple? You can't append to it, right? Can't append purple to it. That would be a crash. would crash because tuples are immutable. Strings are too, by the way, but at least you can add on to them, right? If you say s is equal to Fred and then you try to change s, you know, to, I don't know, d, <laughs> right, the first one to a d, that would crash. So I better comment that one out as well.